Welcome back. If you see the previous video, uh, I will have the link in the description also in one of the corners so they can watch the previous video. And we're going to continue on our client side routing library. Sorry to jump in, but I got an important thing to tell you, which is that if you're following along, coding along with me, the code for all this is on the GitHub repo. Link in the description. Just follow along. If you miss any steps, each changes are in individual commits. So you can just check out that commit and take a look at what you are missing. Now follow along. So here, if you take a look at what we have right now, we are able to match the URL to a component. So if I go here, whoops, it says no component. If I match to the home page, it's A. And when I click, as we said previously, it's a navigation. It's a browser navigation. It's not a client side navigation. So we're going to change that. So to change that, uh, we have to change the behavior of the link. It wants to click on the link and then the link itself has to do a few things, right? One is modify the URL. One is update the, we go through the, we check the URL and then we match the URL with the latest content again and we update the screen with that content. It's quite a lot of things, but we're going to focus on one thing first. We're going to see how we can change the behavior of the link. To do that, after here, we're going to, in after we created the component, right? We created and mounted the component on the screen. We're going to find all the anchor tags and then we add an event listener. So basically we're going to modify them. So here to do that, um, so the reason of having this, yeah, sorry. The, the reason of having this over here in our routing libraries is such that we don't have to add, we don't have to provide a custom link component. A lot of libraries out there, they provide a custom link component for you to use. So you have to use that instead of the, instead of the basic anchor tag. So we, we don't, we, we decided not to do that. We are just going to hack that and monkey patch the anchor tag where we after you render your component, we're going to search all the anchor tags and modify them. So that's what we're going to do. Um, is it safe? Well, we shall explore that later on, right? Uh, will that affect anything? We, we shall explore that. For now, we are going to search for all the document, the query to search for, wait, sorry, query selector all, search for all the anchor tags. And then for each, uh, for each of the anchor tags, anchor tag, I'm going to do something, right? So I'm going to a dot add event listener, click. And this is our event listener event. First thing we're going to do is events dot prevent defaults, which is to prevent the default behavior of the anchor tag. What's the beha default behavior of anchor tags? When you click, it will jump to a new link, right? A low location, it will net browser navigation. If you prevent that, then if you click on the link, no longer does that. You prevent the default behavior. And next thing is we're going to find where we are going to from this link, right? So here, uh, we're going to get the, um, I believe we have it in our href attribute. So we're going to say the a, a link, a target, I'm going to say a dot tar, uh, target, right? So let's see what is that the console that out. So that's clear. When I click on the link, the target is, okay, I'm not really sure what target is. Sets retrieves the frame fish to at which to target content. Ah, sorry, we're not going for target. Why am I? Oh, it's going for the href, right? Which is the target location. So let me click on it. This, this is the target. So the target that we saw just now is, um, is whether you can pass in, say in a, here, you can pass in the target attribute that says whether you are going to uh, open up this link in a new tab or open to, um, to an iframe, op change the link of an iframe and things like that. So uh, that reminds me if we have targets, so if a.target, then we return, we don't do anything. Right, that's because if I click here, target, if it's a blank, then if I click this, it opens a new tab, 
I, I don't want to prevent that. But if you uh, don't have targets, when you click on it, if you click on it, then if you click on it, then it should stay within this page. Uh, and so we print out the target and this is where we're going to. All right, so we, we found the target URL. Uh, I'm going to call it a target location. Then of course, we're going to modify the URL that you see on the URL bar over here. And we can do that. But bef uh, before we do that, uh, we, we have to remove the location. So if you look at here, when we click on this, what is this again? No, target location. Let's save this. And I click on this, you see our target location is a full URL. And we are actually trying to get the relative path instead of the full path. Because later on when we do a matching, remember this route.url, we do this matching. Uh, it's, it's a relative path, relative, or uh, not really relative, but it's a path without the host name. Right, it's the path name of the URL. So we want to get that. Uh, so to get that, we're gonna say uh, path name. So target path name equals to. Uh, I'm gonna use a new. I'm gonna use the URL API. Pass in this full URL, and dot path name. So here, if I print this out, you will see that. Uh, Target location is the full URL. Let me let me try and zoom it up a bit. Uh, yeah. Here you can see that the target location is the full URL. The target path name is slash b only, just without the host name, just the path name. So we get that. Then we want to, of course, do two things, right? First is update the URL without navigating and secondly we want to update mesh the component and render a new component uh, render a new content i want to render a new content so here um let's see so here let's do the first one right so here it's quite straightforward we can do the we can use the history of push state to do this for us so if you if you use any methods like say uh location location dot href equals to something else it will actually immediately triggers a browser navigation the browser will update this url and navigate a new place so the only way to update url without navigating is to use the history api and the history API has this has this function called push state that allows you to push a new URL uh, into the history stack. Meaning you will you will it will update the URL on the location bar as well as when you go back, because it push a new URL, right? So the olden URL will be in the history stack. Then you when you click back, you actually pops and then goes back to the previous URL. So, so it feels like you're navigating because you have new URL in the history stack. Uh, the more you push, the more you see in the back button, but you're doing so without having to have the browser to actually navigate. Right, so this API um, takes in a few parameters, the data, uh, unused. So this is a deprecated parameter, no longer used, but then it has to be there because it's, it's in a second position. You can't really change its meaning. And the third one is the URL, which is what we want. So for data, I'm going to pass in, I'm just going to pass in empty object for now. We don't need any data. Undefined for here. And then for the URL, we're going to use um, the target path name. So let's save this. Let's refresh. So if I click go to B, you can see immediately I am updating my URL to slash B. Nothing's changed. There's no navigation. You see here, there's no browser navigated. And I can click back button and go back to the previous page, uh, which is the this homepage without um, trigger again the browser navigation because uh, when you because this page, you push a new state with the history API. So when you go back with the history API, it also does not trigger a browser navigation. 
right? and go a few times and then back, 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 right? A few times, right? Without having trigger browser navigation. Now, next thing we want to do is of course to update the screen, right? It feels uncanny because you, you kind of navigated to B, you see B on the URL, but then the content is component A. Right? So that's what we're going to do on the second step. We're going to try to figure out what is the content you should see based on the routes B and then we we match a component and then you use that component to render on the screen. So meaning we have to come over here and try to um have to try to let's see what what's the thing I wanna say. We are gonna try to um uh refactor this so that we can reuse this function again. Right? Create routing. Yeah we can keep this but uh but here, I think from here onwards, we can refactor to a function called maybe match route. So I'm gonna call match route. And I can, so the initially we get path name, but here, since we already have path, the target path name, probably I'm gonna pass that in. So I'm gonna say path name, like this. So here I can keep this, match the routes. And then with the match round, we're gonna match the component. And then we're gonna mount the match component. But I think I need to keep the instance of this uh, current component um, over here because later on, I need to remove this, right? Um, yeah, spoiler alert, I need to. But let me just start in a reference first. I'm gonna show you when you didn't do that, what will happen. Here, of course, we're going to copy all of this. This will only happen after we match the routes. Let's, let's highlight all this, move it up. And here now, we're just going to call match routes. Again, with the target path name. Save this. And got nothing because we forgot to call it in the first time. So here, the first time, I'm going to call... Um, Come over here. I think let's have this right after the function. This one and then the match route um path name. Right. Or rather I can just pass it in like this directly. Right, so this one I'm gonna have it somewhere here. Let's format this nicely. And let's try and see. Uh okay, hold on. Let's let's go back to here first. Okay, so we are in our home page. We we have our routing. We match routes and then we render the A page. And when you click to B, you see that we navigated, we, we render B on the screen. And here we have, but we forgot to destroy A. And you click here again, you see a few more Bs being rendered on the screen. Uh, we forgot to remove, we forgot to remove A. And actually, it's, I, I feel like we have more than more, more Bs than we clicked. Well, that's because we have our query selector here. Uh, it's keep going through all the anchor tags on the screen. And I believe now the same link when we click, we have actually attached more than one click events. We have, every time we match routes, we register one click events to the link. So I think we have registered quite a lot of click events on the link. And therefore, when you, once you click, you get a lot of Bs on the screen. So that is something we need to fix, right? To do, clean up the anchor, uh, a click event. Um, let's see what, how we can do this. But this, this let leave it as, as to do first. And then of course over here, we, we want to, let's, let's go back to the homepage easier because there's link. We, we already store the instance current component here, right? um on into this variable so we can actually when we do match routes we can actually see if current component um equals to sorry if it's if it's defined then we're gonna say current component destroy if i remember correctly is this api called dollar destroy let's try and see whether it works let's refresh Go to B. Yes, we destroyed the previous component and we navigate to B. Now we don't have links. So we're gonna go to B and maybe we create a few links to go back to A. 
href a uh, homepage go to a and save this so let's refresh now we have a go to a we can go to b a b a b a b yay okay so why didn't we have added the problem that we had just now where we attach too many event listeners to the link we we'll still have memory leaks where we forgot to remove listeners from the link tag but every time we we when we navigate the new routes we actually remove this uh remove this components from the screen so the link tag that has the click events is not on the screen anymore so you can't query for that and add another listeners and also you can't really click on them so so here on the screen you only see one b but we have our basics uh going so we're gonna come back in the next video and see how we can clean up the click events for our anchor tag.